Hi, and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. This morning, Jim brought in a couple of lugs of peaches, and here they are. Aren't they beautiful? This is one left. Um, we have already done one video this morning on uh, the basics of water bath canning with peaches, and there's the results right over there. And we still have plenty of peaches left. And so we're going to do this video on um, dehydrating and freeze drying peaches. Um, our community focuses on self-reliance, food security, and emergency preparedness. And all of these things that we're going to be doing in these couple of videos on peaches apply to all three of those. It is very much food security. Uh, with the times in which we are living, it is good and many of you are feeling the need to make sure that we have enough food in our pantries to last several weeks in case um, things happen to where we either are in lockdown or prices skyrock or we're not able to get to the grocery store or the grocery stores are out of things. And so some of us are working um, very diligently to fill our shelves with food that will last for more than just a week that they would keep in the refrigerator. So we'll get more into this in just a moment when we come back. begun the process of getting these um, on the um, trays. I've already slipped the skins on these. I did that while I was uh, waiting for our jars of peaches to process. And if you need to know how to slip skins on peaches, it's an easy but messy, drippy process. You just uh, drop them in boiling water for a couple of minutes and then put them in cold water, in a sink with cold water, and then the skins just pretty much slip right off. Um, if you want to see that demonstrated, you can watch the first few minutes of that other video because I demonstrate it there. But these are now ready to prepare, and because these peaches are freestone, I um, am just going to cut right down to the pit in about quarter inch slices all the way around and then um, open them up like a flower and put the slices right out on the trays. Now because all of the peaches in the lug are not ripe enough to start, this video is going to take two or three days for us to get all the way through. We're going to try to uh, fill the dehydrator with this batch and uh, we can't start the freeze dryer until we get um, a few more that are ready to go. Okay, so now I just open this up, and then there are the slices ready to slip right out on the trays. And so I'm just going to continue with this. Sometimes I get one that's a little too fat, and so I'll just re-slice it. I am notorious for cutting myself with knives, so I don't keep my knives super sharp. Okay, so we have one tray ready to go in. We have six more to go. And so we're gonna go ahead and finish putting the peaches out on this tray and then set the dehydrator. I will be dehydrating these at about 140 degrees. And I imagine that it's going to take probably 18 hours or so. So we'll come back when these are ready to come out of the dehydrator. And uh, we'll also come back when we're ready to put some in the freeze dryer. What we're going to do with these when they are done is we are going to save some in the dehydrated state. They'll be leathery and just, oh, that so my mouth is watering right now just thinking about it. And I've already glutted myself on several peaches today. But um, uh, when we'll take some out when they are leathery so that they'll be just perfect for eating. And then uh, we're going to dry some a little bit longer until they're more crispy and we're gonna turn them into powder. So we're going to have peach powder as well. So we will be back at the next step. I went back through the last lug of peaches and found enough that I was able to um, go ahead and slit the skins on enough so that I can do all four trays for the freeze dryer. So that's what we are doing right now. And uh, we will put these in the freezer tonight. Right now the Kelvin Lab, Kelvin is our freeze dryer, is too hot for us to start a batch. Uh, there's a warning on the screen that says running a batch right now would damage the machine. 
So uh, it looks like we're going to have to get a air conditioner for the Kelvin lab. So I'm going to fill these trays and then Jim and I will take them out to the freezer, leave them in the freezer until later tonight when that lab cools down and then we will get these started. And hopefully they will be finished before it gets too hot in there again. So we will be back when the freeze dryer is finished and the dehydrator is finished. So we will see you then. It's just about 24 hours later and these both batches finished fairly quickly. Um, the um, freeze dryer batch was our fastest processing yet. These finished up in uh, 13 hours, so that was pretty amazing. These were about 17 hours in the dehydrator. And um, so here's what we're going to do with both of these. First of all, I'm just going to put um, some of them directly into a jar. And then I will uh, show how I um, finish these off and um, tell you about how they keep, how long they keep, and where we keep them. And then um, I'm also going to powder some, since, you know, these days I seem to really be into powdering. Um, I have learned so much from people who are watching our videos, from our subscribers and others who are making comments. They are telling everything that they do with powders. If you have not read those comments, boy, it is really worth reading. And um, someone said, I do peach powder. I even save the skins and powder those, and it's great over vanilla ice cream and in yogurt and so I thought whoa that sounds pretty good so we're going to try to powder some of these as well so uh, sometimes it's a little rough to get these off this tray because they stick and so this is going to take a few minutes and so um, we'll not do all of this on camera um, but I'll just kind of show you how these come off and then um, these are not quite leathery, they at least break. They're not like potato chips. They still may have a little bit too much moisture for powdering. We will find that out when we powder. Um, but I've learned a trick and I've shared that with you already. If the moisture isn't all the way out, I powder them and then I just put the powder back in the dehydrator for an hour and it really makes it perfect. The, um, the freeze dried ones, Oh my gosh, these are just so light, and uh, they're like crackers. And that, mm, that peach taste is, is right there, and it's really, really good. We'll fill up these jars, and then we'll come back and powder some. So Jim helped me and it went really fast. So we have uh, two quarts of the freeze-dried. Now the freeze-dried peaches take up more volume because the cell structure was not uh, changed when the water was removed. And that's different than when something is hydrate, dehydrated. Um, the cell structure collapses in dehydration and things get much thinner, smaller. So we have... Um, about a tray plus a little bit and a couple of trays here that I piled onto one tray that we're going to attempt to um, powder. So let's see how that turns out. And our wonderful trick given to us by a viewer who's also named Pam to put plastic wrap at the top of the lid so that it does not get up into that lid. So here we go. So you can tell um, my little trick is that that powder should be free flowing. It should just rotate and it just sticks together. So definitely back into the dehydrator with that. These appear to be drier and they should work better. Okay, so we have 
about a pint of peach powder. And it very definitely is two different colors. Now I'm going to show you how I do this next step. I did this with the lemon powder that we recently made and, um, and I think it's an important step to show. So this is one of my um, dehydrator trays. So I am just going to dump this powder. See how sticky it is. You can just see it's just clumpy. And it's, it's clumpy from moisture. And so I spread it out on these trays and then I'm going to put it back in for about, a, um, about an hour. And um, I'm actually going to bring you back after that happens because I want to show you what I do. I did this same thing to the lemon powder. And um, I'm going to put it on two trays. The fan on my dehydrator is at the back. And so it blows across like this. Some people were concerned when I mentioned that I was going to do that, that the powder would blow everywhere, and it doesn't. Um, at least not in my dehydrator, but you know, dehydrators are all different. It is really important for powders, for their shelf life and for their use, uh, to be just as dry as possible. Now you can see this is mostly the dehydrated uh, powder, and you can tell the difference. It is way much more. In fact, there are some actual, I think, pieces here that, um, I don't know, most of it is powdered, but um, we may even run this through the um, blender again after we get it dehydrated. So I'm going to let this dehydrate for about another hour, and then we'll come back when this is ready, and I'll show you how we finish everything up. I checked this after about an hour, and um, it wasn't quite ready, so I gave it another hour, and it looks to me like it's just about right. I have this fine mesh strainer that I put right down inside the funnel, and then I'm going to uh, place the powder right in that strainer so it gets strained as it goes into the jar. And this really ensures that the powder is uh, very fine. And um, I stir it like this, and it just falls right down in there, and it breaks up all those little clumps that used to be clumped because of moisture. And if anything is left like this that I can't mash against the strainer, then we'll just pop it right back in the blender when we get through with everything. But that just makes a fine, lovely powder. So we'll continue with this, and I'll bring you back when I have all the powder in the jar. Here is our powder, and I am so pleased with this. It's just really fine, fine powder. Um, I didn't even have to uh, rerun anything through the blender because I was able to get it all through the strainer. So this is really cool. Um, I have, um, I'm going to put this with our other powder, so this is the lid I'm using for the powders, and I just got this little lid set on Amazon. This is a regular pint jar. So let's give it the twirl test. Oh, look at that. So that means it's dry, dry. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so here's our end products. We have two quarts of freeze-dried, one quart of dehydrated, and not quite a pint of peach powder. And I can't wait to start using this uh, peach powder. And when I figure out some things that I'm going to be doing with it, um, I'll come back and do like a micro moment and share some things that you can do with peach powder. So let's talk about these things for just a moment. First of all, we're going to vacuum seal these in just a moment. And the reason that we want to do that is because oxygen is the enemy to these dried foods, very much so. It's the enemy to all preserved foods. So we need to keep that oxygen out. And um, even though um, vacuum sealing is not like uh, professional uh, in factories vacuum sealing, oh, I'm going to need to rewipe that rim. It is still able to get most of the oxygen out, enough of it that it is not a concern for us. So, so that's one enemy is oxygen. The other enemies to these food are light and moisture. And so we want to keep these in a cool, dark place that is very dry. If we lived, we live in the desert, and so our air is very dry. And uh, so, but if we lived 
I used to live in Houston, if we still lived in Houston, I would be putting a desiccant in here. If you do not have a vacuum sealer, you can also use an oxygen absorber instead. That will also pull these lids down and make a nice seal. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this vacuum sealed. Now this vacuum sealing set, these two little attachments in the hose, was made by Food Saver. And my vacuum sealer is not a food saver, it is a NutriChef. So when it arrived, I had to do some little switching of the ends around and figured it out. So, but it works just fine. Now, if you're worried about that powder being sucked up into the hose, you can cut a round of a coffee filter and just put it right on top of the powder and then your powder will stay put. My vacuum sealer isn't that sucky and so, um, it doesn't suck powder up. If I had flour all the way up to here, I certainly would do that. So now we have this peach powder ready to go in the dark cabinet where I have all of my other powders. So here is the uh, dehydrated. Now with the dehydrated, um, I had my thermostat set at uh, 130 degrees. That's not going to help you very much because my thermostat goes from 95 all the way up to 59, but it doesn't test out to be those exact temperatures. When I check the temperature inside, it's never a match. And so I just sort of put it on a, about a medium setting. Um, and then it took, um, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm thinking it took about 15 hours to do this. And so, um, I then will label what this is and uh, put the date on here um, because that's how we rotate through our food. And this is the larger size. A question that I get all the time is, so how long will this stuff last on my shelf? Well, my answer is, I don't know. And I'll tell you why. It is because I don't prepare things to stay on our shelf for years and years and years. I know with freeze drying, um, what they say is that when you freeze dry things, they will stay for 20 to 30 years. All right, well, in 30 years, I'm going to be 107. <laughs> so. I don't care if it doesn't last for 30 years. Um, I, I, I would be uneasy opening food that had been around for 10 years. And so we store what we like to eat and then we eat it as we go. So we rotate through it. So yes, these will store for a long time, but the best thing to do is to consider rotating through the things that you prepare. So this has been really fun. And I appreciate your being with us. These are great things to do with peaches. And it's fruit season now, so we'll be doing some more videos as we get more fruit. So thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time.